This is the story of a freediving legend, world record holder Andrea Zuccari. He was born to live in the water. Unfortunately, he would die here too. He was considered one of the world's best free divers until one day he mysteriously disappeared while diving off the coast of Egypt. Free diving is known as an extremely dangerous sport, especially since you have to dive deep on a single breath of air. If you've ever held your breath at the bottom of a pool, you've had a small taste of what free diving is like, except that the goal is to go as deep as possible and still return to the surface alive. And this is what Andrea Zuccari excelled at. Not only did he break freediving records, but he even created his own freediving and scuba school. Join us as we uncover the amazing story of Andrea, as well as his tragic and mysterious disappearance. From a young age, Andrea was a water baby through and through. He was born on the 26th of October, 1974, in Rome, Italy, to an Italian father and a Swiss mother. To give you an idea of how much he loved the water, Andrea once said, I spent every summer vacation with my parents at the beach until I was 17. We would go out each morning by dinghy and not come back until late afternoon. I spent literally every day in the water, and I found that it felt more natural to me to be underwater than out of it. My parents told me how, at only three years old, I would go underwater with a swim mask. But before the king of freediving ever tried his hand at diving to insane depths without gear, he found other ways to get an adrenaline rush. As a young athlete, he competed in swimming, judo, and rowing. While growing up in Rome, he worked in motorcycle shops, even racing motorbikes for Ducati on a national level. However, it's clear that this wasn't his true calling. Regardless, he still had a drive to be competitive and push himself to the limit. During his years in Rome, he discovered his love for scuba diving, quickly adapting to the technicalities of the discipline. At this time, he didn't even know what equalization was. If you don't know what it is, equalization is basically the process of balancing pressure in the air spaces of your body, such as the ears and sinuses, with the surrounding water pressure. As divers go down into the water, the increasing water pressure compresses these air spaces, causing discomfort or even injury if not equalized. Proper equalization is vital for safe and enjoyable diving, as it prevents problems like ear squeezes and barotrauma. Andrea's instructor was old school, so he believed that to scuba dive well, you need to know how to free dive. Before Andrea was even allowed to use scuba gear, his instructor made him free dive for two months to get more accustomed to the depths of the water. But Andrea focused on becoming more proficient at scuba, not quite committed to the sport that would claim his life. While on vacation in Egypt, he came one step closer to pursuing his calling. He fell in love with the Red Sea, as it offers the perfect diving conditions with its crystal clear waters, beautiful coral reefs, and diverse marine life, making it an ideal location for both recreational and technical diving. He couldn't ignore the impulse to move to Egypt, so he left his regular job, packed up his life in Rome, and set sail for Sharm el-Sheikh a popular diving destination that would offer the best work opportunities for an aspiring diver like Andrea Zuccari. He was now living in his element, working full-time as a scuba diving instructor for Apnea Academy Red Sea, a training organization founded by Umberto Pelizzari. If you're like me and clueless about the name Umberto Pelizzari, Umberto is widely regarded as one of the greatest free divers of all time. He's the only person of his era to have established world records in all existing free diving disciplines. He started his career in professional swimming and transitioned to free diving at the age of 19. His notable achievements include establishing world records in the constant weight, variable weight, and no limits disciplines throughout the 1990s. Naturally, a man of Andrea's talents was attracted to an academy started by someone like Umberto. It was while working in Charm with Umberto that Andrea discovered just how much he loved freediving. A friend, Marco Nones, challenged him to an apnea dive, another name for freediving or breath hold diving. Together, they reached a whopping depth of 98 feet. To put that into perspective, many experienced freedivers will only dive to around 50 feet. After this experience, Andrea became enthralled by the world of freediving. In an interview, he said that the next month, whenever I had a day off, I would go to Ras Um Sid, a deep coral reef that's accessible by land, and already by the fourth day of practice, I reached 165 feet. That's when I realized it was time to take a course. I was descending to consistent depths without any preconceived notions. 
Today, I realize what a risk I was taking with those first dives. If you don't know just how dangerous freediving can be, there's so much that can go wrong. The first thing you need to consider is the risk of pressure damage to your eyes, ears, sinuses, and lungs, which is something called barotrauma. This is caused by a failure to equalize properly. The next thing you have to worry about is a total blackout caused by a lack of oxygen in your blood supply. You can imagine why a blackout in a large body of water is so dangerous. And this is also why it's so important to have a freediving partner at all times. So after Andrea discovered his passion for freediving, he threw himself into the deep end, literally and metaphorically. At the Apnea Academy, he met Ricardo Mura, his first freediving instructor, and the man who eventually became his personal coach. He started vigorously, getting his hands on any and all information about freediving and, of course, diving as deep as his body would safely take him. Andrea said that living in Charm, I could train whenever I wanted to. Only 10 months after the start of the freediving course, I participated in the World Championship and made 7th place with a dive at 167 feet deep in constant weight without fins. Imagine doing your favorite sport for only 10 months before being part of a world championship. Andrea was well on his way to becoming a professional freediver with some amazing accomplishments. There are several freediving disciplines, all of which Andrea was eager to learn and break records in. In the constant weight category, the diver ascends and descends along a line, using nothing but fins and their own body weight. Similarly, there's free immersion, also with fins, but the diver can use the rope to pull themselves up and down. Then there is constant weight without fins. This is a lot more challenging, as the diver has to use pure muscle, no rope, and no fins for assistance. Variable weight is where the diver uses a weight to descend, and then uses the rope or their own power to ascend again. This limits them from going too deep, as they know they still have to journey up to get through. The last is the most dangerous, aptly named No Limits. No Limits free diving involves a weight to descend, and then they use an inflatable bag to ascend again. This means the diver can push themselves to extreme depths, but they have to be incredibly self-aware of their limits, and safety precautions must be in place. Many believe it's the ultimate test of a free diver's abilities. Others see it as unnatural and unreasonably dangerous. It's up to each diver to figure out if they have the mindset and control for this kind of free diving. For Andrea Zuccari, most of the records he holds are in the No Limit category. He was as fearless as he was skilled, once saying, I have always been very competitive, and this is what allowed me to reach great depths quite quickly, but not without difficulties. At that time, freediving was mostly about being able to reach the surface and say, I'm alive? Yes. All right. So now I can dive even deeper. Often, after a deep dive, I would cough up and spit blood or lose consciousness. But no, I never felt fear. But even with his fearless mindset, Andrea was still concerned with safety. He had become a freedive instructor after all, so he had to guide others on how to approach the sport with safety in mind. He even pioneered his own style of equalization known as aware equalization. This technique teaches divers about the importance of conscious equalization. It involves observing your body's reaction during a deep dive and becoming more aware of your breathing before you go down. Andrea liked to do practices like yoga to get more in touch with his breath. When I started my first scuba course, I didn't even know what equalization meant. It was just something I did naturally. When I became an instructor, however, I discovered that I had to teach others, so I started to learn about it, deepening my knowledge, and I later developed a method which I call aware equalization. Today, I teach equalization for Apnea Academy, and I hold workshops on the topic all over Europe. He also opened his own diving center to pass on all the knowledge he had garnered from years of scuba diving and free diving. It became known as the Free Diving World Apnea Center. Regardless, he was still competitive and intent on breaking free diving records, and this dream finally became a reality. In an interview with Andrea, he said, When I first started free diving, I would download all the films and documentaries I could find on the subject. Many of them featured Umberto Pelizzari. Watching those videos, I dreamed about breaking one of his records, which happened eventually in 2013. I had just recently opened the Freediving World Apnea Center, and in January of that year, I made a descent to 508 feet, establishing the new Italian record for No Limits Apnea and surpassing Umberto's 10-year-long record. And this record was one of many. 
He holds 10 Swiss national records in the constant weight, constant weight without fins, and free immersion categories. On top of this, he held the No Limits Tandem World Record for diving to 410 feet with fellow diver Anna von Boddicker. In July 2014, he became the deepest freediver in the world at the time, reaching an insane depth of 575 feet in the No Limits category. To give you an idea of how crazy that is, a football field is 360 feet long. Imagine holding your breath and swimming hard the entire length of a football field, and then even longer. Not only that, but you're swimming headfirst straight down into darkness, with pressure all around you getting heavier the deeper you go. In 2017, he went even further, reaching 606 feet in the No Limits category. He ended up reaching this depth three times. However, at this depth, he encountered a problem that made him rethink the safety of what he was doing. The problem was narcosis. Otherwise known as rapture of the deep, narcosis occurs while diving at depths greater than 100 feet. So no average free diver ever has to worry about this, but Andrea was obviously above average. This condition is caused by gases like nitrogen dissolving into the body. You may experience effects similar to those of alcohol intoxication, including euphoria, impaired judgment, and reduced motor skills. It can pose serious risks to divers by impairing their decision-making abilities, which is crucial while this deep in the ocean. So with his life on the line, Andrea decided to stop trying to reach the 656-foot depth and formalized the new no-limits Italian record at 575 feet. You can see that while Andrea was intent on pushing limits to the extreme, he also knew exactly how much was too much, and this is what made his sudden disappearance even more shocking. It was on the 28th of August, 2023, that Andrea Zuccari's time finally came. He set out that day to perform routine maintenance on a diving platform at a depth of 130 to 165 feet, just off the coast of Sharm el Sheikh. He was scuba diving, so there was no free diving involved. He had scuba gear and a scooter to propel him, and all he had to do was fix some connection cables. As time went by, those waiting for Andrea's return started to get worried. When Andrea didn't return in the expected time frame, a search operation was launched. The crew immediately got in touch with the Coast Guard and sent boats to join the recovery. The entire area was carefully scanned, with the Coast Guard looking high and low. They searched the entire region up and down the coastline, hoping to find any sign of Andrea. As time passed, they expanded the search further outward to explore the depths of the ocean, in hopes that he got swept away by a current. Specialized teams of divers even joined to find the freediving legend. For three long days, they exhausted their time and energy beneath the surface of deep waters. But in the end, no sign of life could be found. On the fourth day, rescue services had to make the tough call to stop the underwater search. Andrea had disappeared within the depths of the sea. The search went on for a total of four days, yet all they found of him was some of his scuba equipment. No body was ever recovered. So what exactly happened to Andrea Zuccari? Someone who pioneered their own techniques, opened and led a training academy, and broke world records was not new to deep waters, even more so while wearing equipment. While it's tough to say with certainty, we can only speculate upon what may have occurred. A few potential factors may have contributed to the tragedy. First, the depth at which he was working, while well within his capability as an experienced diver, nevertheless poses risks associated with nitrogen narcosis. Andrea had already had issues with narcosis in the past, and it's possible he experienced the debilitating effects of the condition while deep underwater. Another possible explanation could be unforeseen equipment malfunction. Even the most experienced and prepared individuals can't overcome broken equipment in the middle of a dive. It's also possible that Andrea may have encountered unexpected challenges during his dive, such as underwater currents or environmental hazards, which may have contributed to his sudden disappearance. Scuba diving can be more risky than free diving. The most significant difference between scuba diving and free diving lies in the diver's breathing. Scuba divers are trained to never hold their breath underwater, as this can cause lung overexpansion. However, free divers must hold their breath for the entire duration of their dive. Free divers' lungs do not contain more air than they held at the surface, taking away concerns about lung overexpansion and allowing recreational free divers to forego worries about ascent rates, decompression limits, and safety stops. 
Nonetheless, repetitive free dives over 100 feet could potentially cause decompression sickness symptoms and require even more caution. Another big difference is the level of equipment reliance. Free diving involves far less dependency on gear than scuba diving. While free divers can use a mask, snorkel, wetsuit, and fins, none of these items are strictly necessary. As a result, many people find that free diving offers a more natural and intimate encounter with the underwater environment. Andrea was reliant and had trust in his own abilities as a free diver. It's possible that the equipment meant to keep him alive failed in one way or another. One thing we can say for certain is that Andrea was diving safely and following protocols. In an interview with him, he was quoted as saying, I admit that I've had a very fortunate start. Today, I view the sea and its depth with great respect. I strive to be more aware, create protocols, and work with long-term training programs. In doing so, many of my dysbaric issues have greatly diminished. This summer, while I was in training to beat the Italian record for constant weight, I reached 344 feet more than once, but I decided not to try to break the record then. I was aware of having reached my limit, and I did not break the record at all costs. So, I decided to wait until the following year, when I could do the dive and be certain of my results. Diving safety is fundamental to me now. It's more important than personal achievement. Andrea knew his limits and decided to call off another record attempt that could possibly kill him, only to pass while doing routine maintenance. He hadn't even been free diving. Let me know what you think of this cruel twist of fate in the comments. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and live bold.